Hello, my name is Tom. Welcome to my blog. Now, 43 years old, and during the course of life, I went through a lot of crap. But I guess I'm not here to talk about that. I'm kind of over it. I'm done with it. I'm just really through with it. Nowadays, I try to take everything that I learned in life and use it. And what I'd like to do is share a little bit of myself, be me, which is a hard process. I guess as the time goes on and I do more of these, I'm going to get more confident and get this to go somewhere where I want it to go. You know, for a long time in my life, I never really thought I had a voice. It was no to. Mom and Dad basically came from a house that was nothing but abuse. Mom and Dad and my older brothers, I was the youngest. Blah, blah, blah. Then when I got older and my mom got sick, I took care of her. And I guess out of necessity, I took a relationship because I was lonely and honestly I was taking care of my mom. She was like a 50 year old kid, it was like a 57 year old kid at the time when I first started. And you know what happened? It didn't happen in my life. I got kind of pushed into it. Not that, you know, there's anything wrong with helping your mother doing this or doing that, but I guess when the world tells you that you have to do something. When the world kind of like just, you're just always answering something, let's put it that way. Well, it's kind of hard for me because I'm not used to using my voice, so to speak. And that's what I've been changing. That's when I got to the point where I started to want to do this. See, the world could be a really fucked up place. We all know that. Little about me nowadays. I work in an office. I have a, actually a very unique job. I work uh, um, for a place that sells adult novelty items. So. At any point in time, I have some very, sometimes I have some very interesting items laying around. Like, here you go. Something I got in the mail. I'll show you a little bit about what I did. Something I got in the mail. Toy balls. I'm <laughs> saying, so still say it's still in what it's all in. It's, a, it's still in its package. Now, of course, I have a website. It's Grace Playground, www.graceplayground.com. That's G R E Y S P L A Y G R O U N B dot com. Did I do that slow enough? Well, Time goes on. I figure you'll get to know more and more about me. Actually, right now, I hail from like Boston, New Jersey. Won't be dick. Uh, if you look at New Jersey, a good way to describe Gloucester City, New Jersey, is just look at the way New Jersey is on the map. I just picture for a moment that. New Jersey looks like a person standing there, and that person was facing towards the ocean. Now, where Gloucester City, New Jersey is, apropos as it may be, it would be the asshole of New Jersey. Take a look at it on a map. Find Gloucester City, New Jersey. Tell me if I'm not correct in saying, given its location, it's actually the asshole of New Jersey. 
I grew up in Camden, New Jersey. 34 years I lived there. My mom got sick. My mom got sick, like I said, around 19. And at that point, I pretty much took over the house. She was like a kid, a child. Before that, she was very abusive. You didn't go against her. You didn't talk against her. You didn't do shit. Well, thing is, you know, after living that kind of life, you know, they, you know what they don't tell you in the manual? They don't tell you how that's going to affect you later on. Okay. I mean, it's funny because, you know, I found myself in my 30s with not a friggin' clue. You know, it's sad to say, actually. And I ended up losing a lot in life. I was married once. I had four kids. She was she became schizophrenic. And due to her actions, my kids were about to nail. I tried to save them and she cost me two jobs. Not one but two. I only had eighteen months and her timing couldn't have been worse. Let's put it that way. And the worst moment of my life was watching my kids babies don't go away to let them know all my heart maybe part of this is knowing that they live in Orange Park, Florida and their name is now Balasadis my name is Whitfield my last name my given last name if you want to call it that that's not it. That doesn't even belong to me either. I'll show you what, what kind of fucked up life I have. Three times in my life, before I reached the age of 19 and took care of my mother, I should have died. Or I shouldn't be around. So I didn't the day I was conceived. Mom's on a pill. God was wearing a rubber. He didn't want me. And you know why he didn't want me? Because at the time, he was already dating who he was going to be marrying behind my mom's back. So when I came home, I was kind of like his worst nightmare. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself over the years, you know, I'm imagining this freaking guy. All set. I mean, he was already with this girl for two years behind my mom's back. Like, I was such an inconvenience. He was ready to move on. I guess he was just trying to pick his spot. Or whatever the fuck he was doing. And I was like the biggest major inconvenience of his life. Well, that being said, I see him all a couple times a year. The first time I ever seen him, laid eyes on him. Well, he was there for, for six months of my life, I should say that. But then, First time I remember seeing him, or the first time he ever actually came around was when I was six years old. So, after that, the second thing is within the first five months of life, I didn't find this out until I was one of my 30s, but at some point within the first five months of my life, Somebody took a blunt object and smashed me in the back of the head. I can feel this right here in the back of my head. I can wait until you know. I can't really see it because my hair is away. But if you look at that right there, there is a crease in there. And what happened was, I went to the doctor. Now imagine us in your 30s. I went to the doctor because my hands were shaking. Does. I gotta figure out why. They thought they didn't know what the thing. They thought I had uh, the same thing that friggin' uh, Michael J. Fox has. Well, it didn't turn out to be that. I got the I got an MRI done. I got X-rays done, and what ended up happening was I turned around. And when I went, I got a 
call from the doctor and he told me to come in and he sat me down and that I need to talk to you about your results. I was like, all right. So he says, he starts asking me questions. The first thing he asks me, for the first five months of your life, did your parents ever tell you about, you know, you had maybe an extended hospital stay or something? And he goes, I don't know. As far as I know, no. I mean, yeah, I was born, like, we all joined us as a blue baby. But, you know, I don't, you know, you know, I know. Says to me, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm just going to say it. There's only two ways. That he goes, You have two bones in the back of your neck fused together. And by looking at them and he showed them to me, with the damage and everything and how, you know, what it did in the back of my neck, he said, There's only two ways this could happen. And the first way is not even possible. It is not very likely. I consulted with several different doctors. He just consulted with four different doctors. And none of them believe that that's what happened. So he has to check my head. And he's feeling around me, and he gets to that spot. And he goes, just what I thought. And he goes on to tell me that in the first five months of my life, five, six months of my life, somebody bashed me in the head with a blunt object with the intent to kill me. So that had to either be my mom, my dad, or one of my brothers, or my sister. I have a sister, I have three brothers. And at the time it was my mom and dad. So Maybe it was my dad. And if he wanted to get out of there, I think he was the kind of suspect. But I'm not going to cancel out my own brothers because the things I found out later, jealousy and all this and that. Third time was my it was self-inflicted, not purposely. It was just some stupid I did. I drank too much one night and ended up dying for over a minute. That was an experience in itself. And yeah, I had an experience. The thing I remember most was the peace. This peaceful feeling. If you ever died, one thing you are going to be amazed at is the feeling. It's like the ultimate peace. It's like you can't imagine it. I can imagine it. But, and for me, I wonder what death would look like. Now, a lot of people say about the big white light or a tunnel or this or that. That's not what I saw. What I saw black. And the way I used to describe it was. Close your eyes in a dark room. Imagine how black that is. Like, you pitch your black room and close your eyes as tight as you can. Now, imagine something about a thousand times darker than that. That's about what, it, what I saw. And then go along with that feeling of peace. Like, you know, nothing stopped. I'll tell you that. That's just some background. Now, the thing is, at this point in my life, you know, all the crap that I've been through, all the things, all the people, all the crap, the funniest thing was, at one point or another, everybody, my mom, my dad, my brothers, Everybody I met I ended up being my wife at, the, at that point. Before she went schizophrenic, okay, I didn't even realize. You know, I knew she was bipolar. And, you know, the 
thing was, you never would have known it. I mean, it was great in the beginning. We had years of happiness to go. We never guessed it. And at certain points in my life, sometimes I think to myself, what the fuck? Is my life just one big fucking joke or what? I mean, that's what I always used to think. I used to be down. I used to be so fucking depressed. I mean, yeah. What the fuck? I mean, you have, like, if every bad thing in the world that could possibly happen to you, pretty much, almost without exception, pretty much happened to you, you know, it's just one of them things where you're probably wondering half this time, I'm, you know, I don't look like I'm hurting you. As a matter of fact, I, I actually am looking at myself right now making this video and I can see I'm smiling a bit. And the reason why I'm smiling is because I learned all by myself. It's funny. You know, I don't know if anybody realizes this, but there's a point where you're all alone, you have nobody. I mean, think about this. If you could imagine this. Because most people can't because you have people. Like, everybody watching this, just like anybody who watches this, you have friends, you have family, you go home, there's probably other people. You probably associate with your family, you probably have a decent relationship. I just imagine not too long ago, life, life just like, like everything out. And you had nothing. That's pretty much what you got here with me today. And the funniest part is learning. Coming to a point where depression was getting any better. I was pretty much flat on the ground. I even ended up homeless. But now I work at a good company, I got a good office job. I have aspirations for moving back to Philly, and yeah, I do want somebody in my life. I am sick. And if I go down that road, you know, one of the most important things to me that I'm called, I think I understand a lot better than most of you know why. Try not having it. I think you become a master just by default. And you look at other people, how they act, and how you treat them good. And they just basically wipe their fucking ass with anything you do. I mean, they're so self-centered, you know. That's the problem. A lot of times when you go to try to meet somebody, they're self-centered about themselves. It's like, okay, I'm about making me better, but... You know, I'm going to try to, like, sew you in there somewhere. No. no. Keep moving. You don't know what a fucking relationship's about. You know, truth be known, relationships takes two people. I'm the guy. And I got to tell people this. A relationship is two people. And you know what? It's two people that want to be together. But, you know, you're in the same room and you want to be there. You know, even when you, when you talk to people, like, what, like, uh, I have a, a profile on Tony Fish. And the funny part is, when you talk to people, it's very odd. And I'll tell you why. Because, you start to wonder to yourself, you start scratching your head. What the fuck is wrong with people? People are like, so just, I don't know what they're looking for, honestly. I mean, I try not to catch dispersion. I mean, you know, people get busy, people do this, people do that, but, like, when the majority, though, does the same thing, it makes you wonder. Like, here's a good one. You ever have this happen to you? You turn around, and you're, just say you're on plenty of pressure. You get somebody you're really interested in talking to, really interested in talking to you in general. 
And, you know, even when you get to the point where you have a conversation with them, right? All of a sudden, they pretty much just stop talking to you. I don't get that. I'll text them and it becomes a point where, okay, if you don't start the conversation, they don't. So you wait, you play the game. It's like, all right, what are we doing? And the funny part about it is, life is like that. People get so wrapped up in themselves, they forget there's others. They forget what they're doing. I mean, how did some of them people know they didn't meet the, they didn't miss the greatest opportunity of their life? Because you know what? Here's a guy right here who's going to give his right fucking testimony for the right person. I mean, for the first time in my life, I'm starting to have a voice. I'm starting to have my own opinions. And you know what I've done in my life? I decided to do something unique. I think about every choice I make. That's never stupid it is, whether it's getting a cup of coffee or going to work or doing this. I try to be in that moment. I try to cut out all that robotic shit we do all day. And I, I mean, I know there's not much humor to this video, but I can be funny. And you'll see that in episodes to come. You'll see some of my creative side. You'll see some of the stupid shit I do. I'm going to try to make this not only just like a video blog, but I'm going to make it kind of entertaining, so when you come back and you see future episodes, you're going to see some of the goofy shit I do, and you'll probably have a good laugh, hopefully. And that's what it's about. It's about having fun. It's about wanting to share something, maybe a part of myself. I mean, you know, life is treating me like shit for majority of it. I'm going to be 43, believe it or not. And you know what? I feel like in my heart I can rewind that talk and I can be in my early 20s because that's pretty much the spot in life by me, right? So I'm in a unique spot. I feel like, you know, I'm just starting out even though it's you know, 20 years later, so to speak. But that being said, even if it took me that long to get here, all the abuse, all the bullshit, I was always the nice guy, I always, you know, there was times I let people fucking walk on me, this, that, you know. But, you know, that was yesterday. It's not today or tomorrow. You know, I've been single for about the last two years, and it's been on purpose. I didn't do it on purpose. Reason being, I really try to get to know the person. I don't go out to like serial date. I don't go and I don't get into all that bullshit. As a matter of fact, there's a rule that most women don't like about me. And it's actually very true of me. Like, for sake of argument, if we were dating, and I found like we were dating, I was like, more joy and eyes. That I don't I really don't feel like I should do competition yet one. My feeling is this. I feel like okay, if just say for sake or give I'm just gonna pull a name out of out of the hat. Just say Sarah wants to date me. And Sarah's really interested. And, you know, the way I feel is that she deserves my undivided attention. That's the way I feel about it. And I wish other people felt like that. This blog is getting long, and I know people don't like terribly long things, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this my first blog, and I'm going to cut off here. There'll be future episodes. So, I'm going to call. 
All right. This is Tom Whitfield. Hailing from Walster City, New Jersey for this time. Hopefully to move back over to Philly soon. I got, a, I got my uh, hat up and I'm wanting to go. You know, I fear I've lived in Philly for a while, for about two and a half years. And, you know, I was just more comfortable there. Honestly, it's more 20 friendly. You know, that's pretty much for me right now. And, you know, at this point in my life, I just want to be comfortable. I want to be happy. I want to be, you know, when I go home, I want to be comfortable. I want to feel like I'm doing something wrong. Even though I'm just doing something that I want to do. You know? In the future, what we're going to do is we're going to take you on a little journey about the progression, about different things. It's going to be a lot of fun. Because it's not going to be as dry as this, but I don't I realize this one's kind of dry. I was just basically doing this one for background information. So make basically like a debut or whatever. But I wanted to give you like a little background. Maybe I'll touch on one more thing because I can't. <laughs> My job. It's actually the greatest thing. It's funny because, you know, I work in adult novels. I walk around the office every day. And it's funny. You see the open, you see this, you see that. You know, it's a relaxed environment. It's like a family kind of environment. And it's a, it's a pretty good sized company. I mean, they have 20 different, they have 21,000 different problems. And, you know, I wear a lot of hats there. I mean, since I've been there, in a few short months, this is how hard I work. This is an example of who I am as a person. I started out, I was only getting 17 hours a week. All within a month, I went full time. And within a couple of weeks after that, I became their sound producer, a graphics artist, CSR. I do billing for them, I do back orders. I mean, I do a lot. I mean, the only I, I got usually during the week you'll see I have a stack of I have a stack of freaking stuff that I do. I do some of the mail like the giveaways. I do work for I do sound work for the web training videos of Williams Training University. And honestly, the funny thing is happy. I mean, I found a place where I belong, I fit in, I, you know, like working, I like doing things, I, I like going in there and getting things done, and it's opened me up a lot. That and the fact that, you know, over the last couple of years, I took time out for myself. I really worked on myself. I really worked hard to make me a really good fucking person. You know why? Because I'm going to be as blunt as I can be. You know what? I guess that's what this is about. I can't fucking stand the way people are. I can't. Sometimes I look at the way some people are. Not everybody. I'm not talking about like, I'm not just like, I don't hate on everybody. I don't hate on nobody. I don't, I don't have a bad thing to say about no human being in this world. Very laid back, I'm a very calm person. I have my own opinions. You know, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of talent sitting inside of me and there's a lot of things going to come out when now that I know that I have a voice. You know, I try different things. I go a long way to stop and defeat. You know what? 
It's a great feeling. If you stop in a lot of moments and stop being so robotic, you know, that was the key for me. Life just opened up. And you know, when you start paying attention, you can start reading people from a philosophy where you don't even have to have a conversation. I noticed this. You know, I guess being on your own all, you know, most of the all the time, at least lately, well, taught me one thing. Listen. Very important key. You'll find out a ton about people around you. You know, it's not that hard. It's called use your mind. And then your ideas out there. Do what you want to do. Most people are like, well, this is holding me back, that's holding me back, and this, and that, and I got this, I got that. Okay, well, you know what? If it's like that, then there's something wrong with it. Okay, I understand situations, I understand family, I understand all of that kind of good stuff, and believe me. Here's a guy right here who wants his last first name. I want to spend my life with one more person, and that's it. Which is a little bit of the adventure side. Because I am. I like to try different things. I want to experience different things. I want to have fun with different things. And I want to have fun with that person. I want that person to be my best friend. So, have a lot of laughs with me, a lot of, you know, people talk about anything, everything, even things that you would never talk about with nobody else. That's very hard to find. Somebody you have that level of comfort. That translates into your love life, to your passionate life, just sitting around kissing every day, whether you're you know, think about the other person for the day. You know, my way of thinking nowadays is different. Like, I'll see, like, if I were to, if I have somebody with me, and I see they have a hard day all, you know, all day, you know, it might strike me to fix a nice dinner, maybe light a few candles, and put some soft music on, and when he come in, maybe he them a favorite drink. Have them relax, give them a nice meal, just let them know somebody gives a shit. Why? Because the look on their face, you made them happy. Just like you want somebody to do that for you. So, that is me leading by example. Now, I'm going to cut this short. This is Tom Winfield, reporting live from my life, February the 22nd, 2015. I work tomorrow. I can't guarantee you how many times I'm going to put these video blogs up here, but I'm glad I at least did the first one. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting as time goes on. Maybe we'll find a gem or two and all this crap. But anyway, this is me saying, you know, you can have all the misery in the world, but it's what you do with it. You know, at a certain point, you can take every problem you ever had, all the pain, all the disgrace, all the put downs, all the abuse. And you can use it. It doesn't have to be your enemy. It be your best friend. Hard to think. Do what you gotta do. Go back and really look. Look what you really did. Except for the dumb things you did. 
No, you're not perfect. But have the idea in your head of who you want to be. Whether you want to be a positive person or a negative person. If you don't want to be a negative person, don't do underhanded shit. Don't tell the guy you're interested in, oh, well, I'm doing laundry tonight, or I got the kids this weekend, just so you can go out with another guy. Be a stand-up person. Put forth what you want a person to put into you. And that's my message for life. No matter. Because, you know, I can tell you a story, and it would take me a while to do it, of a life that I had filled with misery. Mom and dad are dead. My wife, gone. Kids, gone. Family, they're all way over me anyway. Some of them are sick. They're all just off doing their own thing. Some of them don't even live around. You know, it's just whatever, you know. It's just life. So it leaves me in a spot where I had my little clique, my own little family that blew up in my face. So now I guess it leaves me in a position where it's just me. And I guess thoughts in my head, and all these new ideas, and all these other things that I'm doing, I think it's time for a change. I think it's time for people to realize what the 